Welcome to the Multitasking Maven Show. If you're tired of saying, I don't have time for that, you're in the right place. I help busy moms organize their time and get the most out of their days through videos, tips, interviews, and workshops. After taking one of my productivity workshops, Carol had to say, amazing, you've given me back at least five hours a week. If you would like to find time in your schedule, make sure to go to multitaskingmaven.com right there on the homepage and register. Now, let's get into today's episode. So in today's episode, you know, last week we talked about getting tripped up in your schedule and I shared that I can't cook. And for a mom that has like six people in her family, that's a real issue. So um, earlier this year, I met this girl. And her name is Angie Trueblood. And we, we were out in the lobby. We were having this conversation. She's like, what do you do? And I, and I said, well, what do you do? And she's like, well, I do meal planning. And I said, I need you in my life and, <laughs> because I can't cook. And so this episode is going to be dedicated to meal planning. And it's going to be meal planning for those who don't know what meal planning is all the way to those who are more experienced. All right. So buckle up, grab your favorite cup of coffee. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, this is almost like, I feel like we're doing a coaching call here and, and you're coaching me. <laughs> so Angie, Angie, welcome, welcome. Hi, it is so <laughs> good, glad to be here. Um, I, I just told Rhonda, I could talk about meal planning all day long. Um, I love it and it's my sweet spot. So I'm super excited to be here with you. Well, let's just talk about how you even got started with meal planning. I mean, what was, what was that? What happened? Um, I had little people in my life that required dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So my husband and I were kind of foodies in the sense that we really like trying new restaurants. And before we had children, like cooking a nice meal was sort of a relaxing thing for us. And then once we had kiddos, um, I just the mealtime hour was no longer relaxing. It was stressful. I was working full-time in a corporate job, so outside of the home, and he was he's still in the education system. Um, and so we would get home, and it was just a circus. I felt like we, it was when I really wanted to reconnect with my family, but it's like you walked in the door, and you just needed to start making dinner. And it got a little bit more complicated as we had kids. So for me, it started just out of necessity, which I think is where all great ideas start from. And uh, you know me enough to know that I am a connector by nature. So when I am struggling with something, I reach out to my people and ask for help. So I started a Facebook group. I mean, it was probably like 2010 before they were a thing. And it was just of my girlfriends and they invited their friends and we would just share dinner tips and tricks And it just kind of grew from there. But it was really me trying to systematize kind of what dinner would look like so that at the end of the day, it wasn't something that I dreaded. It was something to where we could sit down at the table and reconnect. It was all about family connection um, and really kind of less about the food. For me, getting dinner on the table is just an avenue for us to be able to reconnect and like really create family memories and you know, that safe space for everyone to collect at the end of the day. I love that. Well, you know, I'm all about systems and I talk a lot about um, really, I think as moms, we compartmentalize. This is what I do at work. This is what I do at home. And they, and they really, they don't marry each other. And so taking systems or taking a system or the idea of a system and applying that to something that every mom needs in their life, um, it works. And for me, it clicks, it makes sense. However, I am going to tell you that when it comes to the word meal planning, when you say meal planning, I feel like we're at a board table and it's going to take me a couple of hours and it's a turnoff for me. And, but I know it's something I need to do. And it's almost like, it's like a job. And I want you, I know that you're going to change my attitude about this and you're going to help other people just kind of go over that summit and like see nirvana on the other side so let's talk about meal planning i mean how long does it take to meal plan so ideally in a perfect world i don't really i don't think it should take longer than like 15 minutes for a given week if right okay (laughs) i love it 
Stay with me. So if you have a system in place that works for you and your family, when you sit down to meal plan for the week, ideally you're not making a lot of decisions. You're almost just matching up what your week's calendar looks like with the meals that you've already decided are good fits for your family. Um, so I, it's funny you say like your life, your work life and your home life. I am very strategic in nature in whatever I do. And so when we set our meal plan for the week, it really is around what we have going on for the week. And then we just have sort of a, a system, I guess. It's a collection of family favorite meal ideas. Some are recipes, some are just tacos. You know what I mean? Like I don't need a recipe to make tacos. And then we kind of match them up for what we have going on for the week. So, and it doesn't need to be complicated. So I feel like sometimes when people hear meal planning, they think you're creating this huge system, right? And mm -hmm. I recommend for people that are just getting started or are super intimidated by it, forget the whole idea of a system. Like I've had a girlfriend who um, we met in a business sense and then she kind of, she came into um, my meal planning Facebook group and she showed me one day we went out for dinner and she had a little pink index card and she just jotted down the meals for the week and that was her meal plan for the week. So if you're just getting started, doing something that simple is really ideal because I feel like it gives you a quick win, which whenever we're trying to do something new, having a quick win is going to get us that much closer to taking the next step. So an index card could be a great start for you. Well, and we're going to have a printable that is going to be associated with this particular episode as well. So we'll get to that um, later on. But I love that, you know, I'm a huge proponent of taking it out of your head and yeah. getting it down on paper or getting it down on a digital tool that I like to use. But um, that's a big thing because we, I carry around the stress of, I mean, when you wake up in the morning, you don't want to be thinking about what you're cooking for dinner. And for me, sometimes I need to be cooking dinner at three o'clock in order to make all of my evening obligations. My children are a little bit older. And so, um, you know, we're going here, but then I still have people that are left at home to try to fend for themselves. Um, so I love that. And just the simplicity of a pink three by five card that right. works for me. That's awesome. Yeah, that's all you need to get started. And it will we'll allow you, as I recommend doing it on the weekend, like before your week gets started, so that you know what you have going on, so that you can pick meals that work for, oh, this Tuesday, we're, we're going to be split up. So I'm going to need something that's going to work for people at home and also people on the go. Um, so no, I mean, I think just starting small is going to give you the confidence to eventually come up with a system. But it's all about taking the decision making and knocking it out on like a Sunday so that throughout the week you're not deciding what's for dinner and it will give you this sense of calm knowing huh, dinner is taken care of like I know what I need to do I just need to execute it all right so I feel like I'm still back in elementary school so <laughs> You are talking to someone who probably has a bag of tricks of five different meals, and one of them includes a Publix chicken. Perfect. So help me, because before we actually started recording, you have a, just a fantastic method that totally clicked with me. So for those of us who don't have a bag of tricks of recipes and see a Pinterest pin with a thousand meal ideas help me to know where to go. What, how do I figure out what they're going to eat? Okay. So I don't think Pinterest is the place to start as much as we all love it. And it's great for business. Um, right. I don't think that is the place to start when you're trying to figure out how to meal plan for your family. So first I would challenge you that you probably do have more than five ideas that work for your family. So I would say, you're like, no, it's literally five. <laughs> Um, so I would challenge you and say maybe tonight at dinner, um, have everyone just ask everyone in the family, hey, what are some things that you guys like um, to eat at home? And just let everyone kind of brainstorm and write those down. And I think once, and maybe it is five, maybe you're totally right and you have to let me know. Um, but write down your five ideas. And from those, sometimes you'll think like, okay, well, that Publix chicken, we, we ate it just like a chicken one night, but then there was that one night that we made it as chicken quesadillas. And so really you just start and brain dump anything that you've ever made at home 
that has been remotely successful, that the majority of people in your family were pleased with. So I think often we sell ourselves short and we don't recognize that some of what we're already doing is working. So start with what is working. And then I recommend before you go out searching for new recipes and meal ideas, first, seeing where you're lacking a little bit of variety. So if you know that you're a family that's on the go, and all of the meal ideas that you have listed take you, you know, an hour to prep and cook, that's not going to be a good fit for a meal plan that you can really execute on the fly. So um, identify like where you kind of have holes in your meal planning system. And so then you can search like maybe then you would search for 15 minute family friendly recipes, whatever. Um, but one idea that I had given you before when you cut me off and we're like, we have to start recording um, is this idea if you feel like you need more recipes, but you just don't know what website makes sense for you and your family. You just don't know, like, there's a couple of websites that I've gone to and I'm like, oh my God, my kids are never going to eat. This is the one that always sticks with me, quinoa stuffed peppers. And like, I remember going to a website, seeing that on the front page and closing out because I knew it was just not for my family, the season of life that we're in. So take a meal that you already cook for your family. Um, maybe not the Publix chicken, but something that's a little more, you know, involved, not involved, but you know, that you cook more from scratch at home. Try to find that on the internet. So take whatever that recipe is. Maybe it is, um, uh, maybe it is chicken enchiladas and do a search and try to find that recipe that kind of matches up the best with how you cook it at home. And that's probably a really good website for you to get meal ideas from. So I always do, even like in my other business, I kind of do reverse strategy to find things. So find Ooh. something that's really similar to what's already working for you at home and then see what else that blog or that website or that Pinterest board has to offer because it's probably in line with what your family appreciates. That, when you said that, okay, so a couple of things. Number one, you said like 15 minutes, mm -hmm. what works with your schedule because we've talked about scheduling and then working backwards from things that you are already making. And so for me now, that's only four things, but those four meal ideas to even like check out like a meatloaf. And then go, you know, see those ingredients because I know, you know, as moms with, you know, mine aren't littles, but they still can be picky eaters. You know, I'm not making, I'm not making, I do not have time to make a separate meal for each child. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I know now, especially with allergies, food allergies and things like that, it's really, really, really important that we take note of the ingredients. And I know those moms who have children, um, they, they, they're doing those things already, right. but finding those websites that are similar to what you're already cooking. I mean, I never even thought about that. Yeah. That makes it easy. Yeah. I mean, well, even you saying meatloaf, cause you said that's what you guys had last night, something that you could even search for. So you could find a meatloaf recipe similar to what you're already doing, but you could mm -hmm. also almost Google search for twists on traditional meatloaf. So maybe you could find a meatloaf recipe with a totally different flavor profile, but the base of it is similar to what you're already making. So it would seem different, but your family would probably be open to trying it. And it would be pretty easy because you've already, you're already used to making that type of food. Um, now, are you, when you're sitting down to do your meal planning and even like your girlfriend with a pink three by five, yeah. she was doing it a week at a time. Mm -hmm. And I guess starter, like for me, who has that phobia of meal planning, it's going to take time you put it in for me just to do it for a week at a time right now. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm asking. <laughs> Sorry, I lost you for a second. Yeah. Okay. I would recommend starting only with a week at a time. Um, okay. Usually getting to a month is... It's something that I don't always execute to plan because your month is going to change, but there is something really like calming about having identified what meals you're going to have each night of the week, even if you need to tweak it by week three. The fact that you've already made that decision feels rather amazing to know that part is kind of done. Um, and even with my week meal plan, I don't always meal plan into the weekend because I don't know if we might want to go out or I don't know if my husband's schedule is going to shift. And so I will often meal plan for sure through Thursday and then have an idea of what Friday is going to look like. 
And then Saturday and Sunday, we'll either do leftovers or we can pick up something, you know, depending on what our schedule looks like. Right. And I like, because before meal planning, I look at a calendar and it's completely blank. And that for me is overwhelming. And, but it's something I know I need to do. But if I look at my current schedule and I see what those activities already are, and then can plug the meal in to that schedule. So it's meeting like all of our needs. Because here's the other thing, you know, I see like with meal planning, I feel like, you know, you see some of these images and I guess, you know, we're living up to that Martha Stewart Pinterest image of like someone who was taking, you know, five hours and they've dumped everything in a bag and they've frozen it in their freezer meals for like six months. I mean, that's what I feel. And I'm like, I can't do that. That's not me. What do you, what do, you do with that? I mean, you, that's just, I mean, what do you do? So there is beauty in freezer meals. I am an advocate of it. And actually, once when I transitioned from needing meal planning help myself to making it a business, I actually became affiliated with a company called Wild Tree. It's more of a traditional like direct sales company, um, but mm -hmm. I don't do parties or anything like that anymore. I just love their products. And so they have meal helpers, but they also have these dinner prep kits and they're specifically designed for freezer meals. Um, I love them. And I typically, in an ideal world, I do one of their prep kits once every six weeks or two months. And you can prep 10 meals and pop them in your freezer because it's nice. I never, when I sit down on Sunday, I never want to feel like I'm starting from scratch to plan my week out because that is also, you know, just more decisions that you have to make. So if I have some freezer meals in our freezer, I can think like, oh, okay, well, we're going to have this grilled Asian ginger chicken on Tuesday. So that'll be Tuesday's dinner. And then often it's enough for us to have leftovers so I can repurpose it and make it into chicken enchiladas or chicken sandwich or chicken salad on Thursday. Um, so freezer meals are great from the sense of you are doing some of the prep work and the execution on the front end so that you don't have as much time in the kitchen when you're actually getting in there to cook. So you, it's like you can have the benefit of more elaborate meals without having to spend the time in the kitchen because I, there's no one that I know that wants to spend for sure on a weeknight, more than 30 minutes in the kitchen from start to finish. It's just the space we kind of live in right now, you know? Okay. So I think then freezer meals then is like middle school. <laughs> don't do that yet. No, so, I'm not going to worry about it. I need to get my system down and I need to feel comfortable in, in planning um, and just get my first week. Just get my first week down. I feel really confident. I don't feel overwhelmed. And I feel like I can do that. Um, so let's just really quick, let's summarize. So like 15 minutes is what we're talking about for meal planning. One week at a time. You could use your pink three by five card or use a printable. Um, and then, you know, at first use those meals that you're comfortable with, that your family is eating right now. And so you're cooking one meal. That's it. Yeah. Um, then doing kind of the research backwards, you know, looking at what those ingredients are, for example, meatloaf, doing a search, finding a similar recipe, and then going to that site and starting to search, yeah. you know, for maybe uh, filling the plug. So that could be your next week. So maybe you're only adding one or two new meals yeah. the following week. Do not add more than one or two. I would say if you're just starting, don't add more than one meal. Um, per week, one recipe, for instance, I would take that list of family favorites that you came up with and see if there's just ways that you can maybe tweak some of the spices and flavorings to make them feel different. Um, I am a big proponent of theme nights because again, it cuts down on the decision making. Um, and you could even do that in your second week. You could say, okay, well, what are the themes that we like? We might like an Asian night. We might like a taco night, a pasta night. So that when you sit down on Sunday, you're like, okay, well, Wednesday, okay, it's pasta night. Perfect. What kind of pasta makes sense for what we have going on that Wednesday? So there's little ways that you can almost like start to build a system. I have a whole course on it, but it really takes you through like building a bank of recipes and meals, applying a bit of a rotation to it. So it, it kind of steps you through the process of creating the system. And week on week, as you get more comfortable, you're going to be creating a system whether or not you know it, really. 
So how many meals are you really rotating? I mean, it sounds like we're looking at maybe 10 or 15 a month, if that. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on how much variety your family wants. Um, I don't recommend, I mean, max 30, you know, because you could right. read that month after month. But if yeah. you're just getting started, I would say 15 to 20 and kind of live in that, you know, see if you feel like it's too repetitive. Maybe some of the meals on there, once you cook them, you're like, man, it's not really anything I want to keep on forever and you can swap it out. But I wouldn't, that's the thing with meal planning and really anything new that we take on. Sometimes you're like all in on the planning and it gets overwhelming. And so you stop doing it. Just yes. do chunks that make sense so that you can still stay excited about it. I'm already feeling better. I'm feeling lighter. <laughs> okay, so we've gone to elementary school, we've gone to middle school, now we're going to go to high school because I really, I want to talk about, you know, those folks who are more experienced like you, um, because you've got a great method here for decluttering your recipes mm -hmm. and helping us manage your crazy Pinterest board that has 200 recipes on it that you would never even try. Right. So what do we do? So I actually don't even use Pinterest for... I mean, I have Pinterest boards, but it's mainly like for business. So people can go and see what recipes make sense. Um, but I never go to Pinterest to find recipes. So it's really just coming up. It's kind of taking that system and more automating it. And maybe seeing like where there's holes in your meal planning system that you need to plug in a different solution to cooking dinner at home every night. Um, so I am having, I was over at a girlfriend's house over Christmas and she has been doing HelloFresh and she was like, I have a free week of it. And I'm like, I would love to try it, you know? And mm -hmm. so it's really like getting your system running and then seeing, are there ways that I can simplify this that works for my family? And the idea for me, we're just doing it for a week right now, but if we love it, maybe we'll implement it two nights a week. The idea of adding more variety in a way that it just comes to my doorstep and we don't really have to think about it or go find that recipe is genius for me. Um, so I think the high school version is maybe maybe the freezer meals more regularly, um, maybe doing a little bit more of the meal prep on the weekend, um, just kind of getting your week off to a good start and doing like some of the chopping and things like that on the weekend so you don't spend that much time in the kitchen. And then really figuring out how to just add variety and excitement to it. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it should be a fun highlight. I want dinner to be a highlight of our day because we're all together. So it's finding things that do that. Well, you've mentioned now two subscri it sounds like two subscription services. Do you recommend going with a subscription service or for someone who's new? No, not when you're new. I feel like when you're new, you need to kind of live in the energy of your family to figure out what it is you need. Um, I'm actually not a big proponent of the meal plan subscriptions to where you get emailed like a digital meal plan that often they'll include like a shopping list and all the recipes for the week. I think they're good when you get to the point that you know you need to add variety, like you're just getting bored of whatever meals and you need some new ideas. But week in and week out, to me, that doesn't work because our schedules change. You know, like our kids have activities or my husband's working late. And so I don't want to pay for something that's just not going to work for our family. So definitely when you're starting, I feel like you should work with what is already working. Um, add a little bit to it at a time and kind of getting into a good groove so you can see where the hiccups are rather than like I had a, a client, she's a friend, a client, um, and we were talking and she had subscribed to a meal plan service for a year because it was just on autopilot. She's like, Angie, I didn't even make the meals. It was just, you know, it was a low price and I just got charged it. I'm like, you need to cut that off and then <laughs> go right. back and see if any of them look exciting and like pull the meals that look good and work that into your rotation. But none of us really need that. Well, right. some of us do. Some people, I'm sure it probably works for some people, mm -hmm. um, you know, but as our kids get older and more involved in stuff, it's kind of a hard thing. Well, I think your method of just kind of researching what's currently working for you and then going to the sites and getting meals, I mean, that's going to save you, it's going to save you time and money. And then again, we're not talking about a thousand, like I actually saw a Pinterest pin that had a thousand meals. 
I mean, that's just over the top, overwhelming. I can't do that. Even like 50 or 100 seems overwhelming when you and I are sitting here having a conversation and we're really 15, 20, 30 max. I mean, think about that. That's a new meal like once every day. I mean, it's, you know, for the month. I mean, who does that? I, I can't do that. I have, um, I have a couple of posts on my site about, um, and it's based on theme nights, because again, I feel like it takes a lot of the decision making out of it, but it's like twists on pasta night, um, ways to mix up taco night, other ideas for pizza, great ideas for grilling. I think the max is like 12. <laughs> right. I don't think yeah. any more than that. And I do want to make sure, okay, so go, let's go ahead and um, tell everybody your site so they can go to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's mealplanningmama.com. There's lots of blog posts. Uh, a lot are about the process of meal planning, but then there are some that have ideas and recipes in there, um, you know, ones that have worked well for our family and that help you kind of put some twists on those different theme nights. So mealplanningmama.com. And right there on her homepage, when I was talking about her decluttering, um, her system for decluttering your recipes and your all of your Pinterest pins and all of that, that is a great opt-in. I have that opt-in, so make sure that you pick that one up as well, all right? Yeah. So now we're just going to put the cherry on top here because, you know, I think that the crock pot is your right hand. Um, and I love using my crock pot, but for my birthday, actually, my sister got me, and I know you got one for the holidays, for Christmas, the Instapot. Okay, so that is one thing. It's funny, like you said, like your friend who has had meal planning for a year, but she's never used it. I see a lot of people get the Instapot, and they never take it out of the box, because for some reason or another, pressure cooking seems it, it's not it's not anything that's new i mean they've just instapot's just made it sexy <laughs> totally. totally and like not everything is the pressure cooker part of it you know what i mean there's like the rice cooker which i don't think that's i haven't taken mine out of the box either but i did just get it like three days ago <laughs> okay and i will tell you so my approach to meal planning like you like i think i've said is all about simplifying I just got it. I had a friend of mine when I told her I didn't have one. She's like, Angie, I feel like you're kind of a fraud that you don't have an Instapot <laughs> and like you're helping people meal plan, but I didn't need it. I had a crock pot. I don't love crock pot meat, um, but sometimes it works in a pinch, but the handle of my crock pot finally broke. And so <laughs> I was like, I have to now. So I asked for it for Christmas and um, yeah, I'm excited to kind of dig in because from what I've heard, the texture of the meat is different than what it is in a crock pot. So I'm hoping it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So last night, okay, so you can use your Instapot as a crock pot. That's yeah. why you made that statement. Um, and I have been using my Instapot as a crock pot. Right. I mean, that's how, that's how bad it is here. Um, people are going to start sending food to my family. Um, Which but is not last, a bad thing. Like, no. Amazing. <laughs> no. And so, okay. So last night what I did is I took potato. Now, I want you to say, okay, so here is the other myth that we're going to debunk right here is that, oh, my meal only took me 20 minutes. Okay. So you have to do the prep, right? And you can even freeze it. But when you put everything in the Instapot and you put 20 minutes on the Instapot, it has to reach a pressure to cook for 20 minutes and then it has to depressurize for you then to, you know, turn the lid. And so we're looking at longer than 20. I mean, you're probably oh, looking no. for probably full cook time of 30 minutes, okay. but that was also, so for example, what I did is I took uh, potatoes, quartered them, you put the water in, um, kosher salt and put them in the bottom. And at the top, what I had was the spring thing, the, I don't even know what it's called. It's the thing that you put in, right, with the pot, the spring pot, the spring okay. pan, okay. and it was frozen. So the meatloaf, the mixture I had put in there was frozen, and then I set it for 20 minutes. Now, I went shopping, came back, and dinner was done. Um, and so you just, you know, opened it up. I pulled the meatloaf out. It was wonderful. The potatoes at the bottom, I put some heavy whipping cream and butter and a little bit more salt. It was like the best potatoes. Like my, my children don't eat potatoes. I mean, you're like, how is that? No. But they ate, they loved it. They loved it. Okay. And then the meat, the meatloaf, again, it was like one of those things. I'm like, eh, I don't know if it's going to work or not. They loved it. Okay. Yes. I cannot wait. Well, yes. so you can definitely like put some twists on that meal 
to make it like I was thinking you could even do almost like Salisbury steak little, you know, uh, you know, like just little Salisbury steak patties. You could still have the potatoes. Maybe if you mashed them last night, you could do a more whole and you could do, I don't know. So I, I can't wait to like dig into it. I'm wondering like, do the drippings from the meat, like does it fall over the potatoes or does it stay in one? No, you actually, I had, I wrapped it in Reynolds wrap. Okay. And so then those droppings don't drop down onto the potatoes. So the potatoes are down there cooking like they need to be okay. and they weren't mushy or, you know, you know, they were good. Okay. And then um, I pull, pull up the meatloaf with the thingy that goes in the Instapot. I pull it up and We're then, I mean, <laughs> and then, well, I mean, you're the professional. I just, I, I, I don't know. And so then, and I just put it that on the table and then, you know, did the mixture and I, you know, of course put the, potatoes in a, in a bowl or whatever, but, um, I see where it's going to save you time with the Instapot. If you're doing a lot of freezing freezer meals, um, pop them in there and you're, you're probably still looking at a 30 minute versus a six hour in a crock pot. Right. Yeah, um, however, it's, so this is one of the time categories. So I encourage people like when you're thinking of theme nights, it doesn't have to be around like the type of cuisine or the flavor. Some people who have really varied schedules should make their theme nights by time. Like this is a list of my 15 minute meals. This is the list of like, I call them set it and forget it. So like you could bake a sheet pan meal. It might take 45 minutes, but you just put the whole thing in the oven and you're done, you know, like hands off. And that's where the instant pot falls and like the set it and forget it. Like you might need to do a little bit of prep work, but once it's cooking, you can be off helping the kids with homework or tending to something else. And so I feel like that lends itself to one of those like time categories. Right. And I think that, I mean, as far as the instant pot goes, it, and I don't know what the fear is about um, pressure cooking, it's really the little vent in the back. So, you know, Whatever the recipe is, they're going to give you instructions and just make sure that vent is set correctly. Because once you put the lid on the Instapot, you hear the locking mechanism. It makes a sound. And so you know you're good to go. <laughs> Even last night, I said like such a pro last night, I'm like, stand back. <laughs> Don't get near the Instapot. Stupid. <laughs> so, and then, you know, even using something that will help you with the venting, it can either do it naturally or you can change the little vent at the top and it releases the pressure. And when it's done, then it's done and you open it and you hear, it's like uh, Mission Impossible. You hear it click open, da -da -da -da, and you take it off and the meal is done. I just want people not to be under this misconception that, oh, it's only going to take me 20 minutes for something that's frozen and I'm done. That's not necessarily the case. You got to pad in there some, some time. But I do see this, you know, at last night night even me um you're going to be fantastic fabulous like i'm coming to your house to eat um because when you start using this it's just it's it's going to be a game changer for you i think yeah. but i just want to go over one last time and then we'll kind of end it with any last minute thoughts um you've really put down a lot of barriers for me um before you know i was thinking a couple of hours for meal planning um uh, we're looking at 15 minutes one week at a time start with what is currently working don't start with a blank slate i want you to look at your calendar look at the time blocking that you've already been doing in your schedule what is going to work for you start there and then build um, ultimately you know to get to high school you know we're looking at 30 meals total and that could be over you could do that over a six month period of time yeah. um you know, just like what angie was saying you know she meal plans meal plans up through Thursday and then it's okay to give yourself grace to pick up a pizza on the way home if you want to you know um have breakfast dinner that's one of our most favorite things is breakfast dinner like yeah so that's one of our weekly themes we alternate that with like a seafood night um but what you were saying I, I want people to understand like you don't even have to be you know because you said you're not a good cook you don't, you don't even need to cook at home. That still doesn't take away the fact that you need to plan what you're having for dinner. Like that's all meal planning is. Even if you ate out every night of the week, how amazing would it be to know where you were gonna go and not have to have that discussion with someone else? Um, the grocery stores now have so many different meals that are already like seasoned. Some are already cooked. 
to where work in some easy nights. Like you said, Rhonda, like give yourself some grace. I don't want people to shy away from meal planning because they think they're not a good cook or that they just don't have the time to do all of this or that they get exhausted cooking by the end of the week. Like work in methods that make your week flow easier, a leftover night, you know? So all of these things should be incorporated eventually so that you don't burn out from it because dinner is not going to stop being served. <laughs> like you got to eat. So you may as well figure out a way that works for you. You have to feed the children. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You'll have to feed the children. Okay. So for all of this goodness, you're going to want to go to mealplanningmama.com. Number one, you're going to download um, the decluttering exercise. I highly recommend that. Uh, Angie also offers a course. So I want you to take a look at that as well. Um, lots and lots of good stuff. I feel like my tripping point of meal planning, I'm going to crush it. In the, new, in the new year. Yes. I feel yeah. empowered by it. I don't feel overwhelmed by it. And I'm very, I'm a systems and a schedule girl. And, um, I, but I'm very intimidated. I'm very, very intimidated. about meal Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. So is there any just last minute tips, tricks, um, that you would like to add? I mean, the biggest is just give yourself some grace. Um, don't set the bar super high. I would, I would go ahead and set some expectations. Maybe it's that you're going to meal plan and you're going to eat at home three nights a week if you don't traditionally eat at home. So set some expectations and recognize that there are going to be nights where a pizza is perfect, you know? So just, I like people to have their meal planning be as simple as it can be for their family. So we don't need complicated. We just need to be able to get dinner on the table and show up with the energy and the ability to connect with our family. Like, that's why I meal plan so that I don't show up the t at the table as like a mess that I can actually sit and have a conversation and love on my people. Right. Well, you know, for us, we do a couple of things. One of the things that I love, and my husband actually started this, was um, what's your favorite part of the day? What was your favorite part of the day? And I remember even when my 11 year old was like, he couldn't even talk and he would just babble and everybody would be like, yay. <laughs> it was that. Now, okay. So now that's something like we, we remember that. And I love how you started off this whole conversation. It was just about, you know, being present with your family, getting your family around the table. Yeah. Um, we also do this fun thing. Would you rather? And I know Pinterest has a ton of these, um, you can go on and ask just silly questions. Would you rather do this or would you rather do this? This has a lot of great conversation starters at my table. My kids love doing this. Um, and we typically, we do it on the weekend, but um, yeah, it's doing fun things. It's having conversations. It's talking about your day. It is, it's those things that you're making memories and that's, you know, and, and, and feeding your family. Oh, two birds with one stone, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Angie, for sharing all of your wisdom and, um, you know, helping us overcome the challenge of meal planning. Yeah, you got this. You can do this. <laughs> thank you for listening to today's episode. For show notes and links, go to multitaskingmaven.com. Remember, register for the Manage Mama Overwhelm Productivity Workshop so I can help you find time in your busy schedule. We'll see you soon.